Week three in college football was special because teams were exposed. We are very close to figuring out all the contenders and all the pretenders. So I got to give you guys the five best performances from week three in college football and the five worst performances from week three as well. And remember, these are not the five best teams in college football. These are the five teams that perform the best in week three and that deserves acknowledgement all by itself. First team up. Notre Dame fighting Iris. Oh, you thought it was over for Notre Dame after that loss to NIU? No siree. Their head coach, Marcus Freeman, talked to NIU's head coach and was like, what are you seeing on film that you were able to stop? And they have made adjustments, people. And Purdue was the sacrificial lamb, 66 to seven. They never stopped pouring it on. Now, are Notre Dame's offensive issues fully fixed? No. They ran the ball at a high rate, but it is good to see a team that is resilient and bounces back and didn't just say, oh, our season's over. We don't have a conference. We might not be able to make the playoff. Nah, they came out there and played hard. Good job, Marcus Freeman. Good job, Riley Leonard. Congratulations on the win. Next team up. The Oregon Ducks. Yes, sir. They rolled on in the Corvallis and with that inconsistent offense through the first two games with a more healthy offensive line and put up a 49 to 14 beating on little brother. Now you might be saying, George, well, Oregon State was decimated when their head coach Jonathan Smith left and everything else. Well, guess what? That Oregon State team will beat Boise State and Idaho, which Oregon has already played both of those teams. This is a really good win. Oregon didn't punt throughout the entire game. Their defense was solid as well. Huge win, and it was a get-right game for the Ducks. And you have to appreciate the way that Dan Lanning is getting his team ready to go. And remember, it is a very long season because you don't have to be right and looking like a championship team in September. You got to be looking like that in November and just manage the rest of your schedule. And next up on the nice guy list is the Washington State Cougars. They took their talents down to Seattle and beat up on big brother, the Washington Huskies, 24 to 19. Now, this is a case just like Oregon State and Oregon, where uh, they were left out of the conference realignment and people were leaving them for dead. And you know what? The conference is coming back with more teams and they went down and took care of the Huskies. Huge win for Washington State. This is a morale boost. This is thumbing it in Washington's face because Washington ran off to the money and to the prestige of the Big Ten. So a uh, huge win for the Cougars. Deserve celebration. Oh, the Alabama Crimson Tide went on into one of my favorite stadiums in college football, Camp Randall Stadium versus Wisconsin. Their first time there. 42 to 10. Now they did get lucky that Tyler Van Dyke, Wisconsin quarterback, tore his ACL in the first quarter. And because this game would have been dramatically closer. But you know what Alabama did? Came out, played good defense, ran the ball well, and had a huge victory. Because you can only play who's in front of you. And you can still end up in a close game like LSU and South Carolina did when a quarterback goes out. But instead, they mashed the gas. And Jalen Milrow looks like a potential Heisman winner right now. He is carrying Alabama's offense on his back. He is their leading rusher in terms of carries. And when you look at what he's doing, passing the ball, he's being efficient as well and not turning the ball over. Good job, Alabama. And the last team up, the Kansas State Wildcats, took on Arizona, a 31-7 win. This was an absolute domination on the scoreboard. Now, this Kansas State team will be judged by their quarterback, Avery Johnson, and how he does in comparison to their last year quarterback, Will Howard, who's over at Ohio State, because they let Will Howard walk just so they can let this young kid play. And we are going to find out how far they are able to go. Because remember, Arizona was ranked. But Arizona's defense, we knew was a little bit shaky coming into this game. But it was their offense that, you know, 
was going to carry them well kansas state's defense shut them down you guys make sure that you guys like subscribe tell a friend about the unafraid show and share the content now here are the worst performances for week three in college football and uh, sad hate to say it man florida state is on this list after their 20 to 12 loss to memphis what this is unfathomable who would have ever thought that Florida State, who was 13-0 last year, yes, I know they lost some pieces, but you should have a culture there. There should be something. This team looks like they're doing nothing right at all. They're not doing anything right on offense. Uh, quarterback play needs to improve, and when he is good, the wide receivers are dropping the ball. O-line's not blocking well. Running back's just doing okay. It is a terrible performance. But at least their defense isn't giving up a ton of points. I guess that's something to smile about. But they haven't played a great offense yet. And they are getting pushed around. They are getting bullied. Mike Norvell, get it fixed, man. Otherwise, people are going to start talking. This team talked so much trash coming into this week that they have to be on the bad guy list. And that is Colorado State after their loss to Colorado. They talk now, Colorado is used to being the people that talk all the trash, do all the jawing. And remember, every time Colorado does it, they did it to Nebraska, they did it to Oregon, they did it last year to a couple other teams. Every time they come out, they get smacked up. This time, Colorado didn't do any talking against Colorado State. The head coach and Dion weren't doing any back and forth. It was their players, their quarterback, and their wide receiver, Torrey Horton, were just spewing off at the mouth, and they came out and had bad performances. Come on, man. You can't talk trash and then get beat like that. And also on the worst performances list, the Arizona Wildcats. I love some of their players and have had a chance to watch them in high school, including Tedaroa McMillan, their all-star, all-American wide receiver, still had a great game, well over 100 yards, over 10 catches, and I love their quarterback, Noah Fafita, as well, but this Kansas State defense absolutely stoned them, and Arizona has to fix their defense first and foremost, but after getting stoned, in this game, you have to wonder if this is a team that was projected to potentially be able to win the Big 12 is even a contender in the conference. Next up, the Florida Gators, 33 to 20 to Texas A&M. Lord have mercy, Billy Napier, make up and just make a decision. Pick your quarterback. Are you gonna go with the veteran Graham Mertz, who you haven't won a lot of games with, or your five-star freshman DJ Lagway. This whole two quarterback system is not gonna work because quarterback math is one plus one equals zero, fam. You, you can't do it. Yes, you can have somebody that comes in like a Taysom Hill or like you did with Tim Tebow with Urban Meyer and just run some tush pushes and short yardage plays, but you have to have your quarterback. And if Billy Napier wants to survive the rest of this season, he is going to have to pick a quarterback, let them have a little bit of lumps, and then just try to build something and get some momentum because it is hard to find wins on this schedule. Their over under for the season was like five, and it probably is like three and a half in Vegas right now. It is not hot. And the last team on this list, another SEC team, the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Last week, they got beat by Arizona State. This time, Toledo goes to Mississippi State, 41 to 17. Wait, yes, you let Toledo, who has some fine players, fine coaching, all of that. So no disparagement to them because they came out and they kicked you in the, in, in, in the rear end, buddy. But 41 points? This is the sign of a team that has quit right now because there's no reason that that game should ever, ever be that bad. But what about the people? Oh, the SEC is the best from top to bottom. Well, the bottom is Florida and Mississippi State right now and Vanderbilt as well. And we support... Like, what, what are we supposed to make out of that? Because the bottom ain't, ain't looking real good versus anybody right now. I'm just saying, I don't make the rules.